On the breakfast today, Anambra State enters a new phase as a safe, democratically elected governor, Professor Charles Solodo, takes over the governorship from Willie Obiano, who has successfully ruled the state for eight years under the All Progressives Grand Alliance. We we'll take a look at the task ahead of the new governor. Also in the breakfast, as Manchester United gets knocked out of the UEFA Champions League following their loss to Atletico Madrid in the round of 16. What is the implication for Man United and the stakeholders? Don't forget, we'll also be going through the headlines on the front pages of today's newspaper, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Very good morning to you and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. Very good morning to you as well and thank you for joining us. It's a beautiful, beautiful Friday morning and we have a lot in store for you this morning on the breakfast, a bumper a package. We'll be looking at the earlier advertised uh, uh, topics with very seasoned guests and promises to be an interesting one. Uh, but let's start things off with a usual trending segment. A lot to talk about, but we can only fit in three of them. So let's get rolling. Uh, the first one happens to be one from the swearing in ceremony of Governor Chukuma Chao Solodo of uh, Anambra State, which we'll be looking at later. But um, at some point, what we're expecting to see, you know, Governor Solodo's speech trend, um, unfortunately, uh, it was not to be so. Now, the governor had intended, or governor-elect had intended for that to be um, a low-key ceremony, you know, a low-key ceremony. However, um, he has his work cut out for him, and this seems to be something that should give him an indication of what he'll be facing. He wants to do um, business unusual, or as they say, it won't be business as usual. Um, but um, I'm sure what happened yesterday uh, is, is a bit like of a taste that he, his, in his battle will be to ensure that it's not business as usual. Uh, because in what was meant to be a low-key ceremony, two women, um, two ladies turned it into a high attention ceremony, you want to call it that. Um, the wife of the outgone governor of the state, or the immediate past governor of the state, um, Ebele Chuku Obiano, um, who seems not, not to be too popular uh, amongst the Nambrarians, and the wife of a former military governor of Anambra State in 1966, and a former uh, leader of the breakaway Biafra Republic, Dim Chiku Emeka Odimegu Ojuku, um, Bianca Ojuku. She is pictured on your screen there. Um, the video shows um, a Billy Chiku who arrived at the scene quite late because it's meant to be a short ceremony and uh, she had to park her car uh, far because the entrance to the government house had been blocked she arrived late and after sitting down walked over to where bianca was seated uh, it's not clear what happened but a report said that um, she uttered some um not too charitable words to a belly chiku um according to reports um um to wit you said you would never attend any APGA event and said our government uh, would, not, would not last eight years so what are you doing here uh, eh? Bianca. And uh, I don't know what else she said, uh, but Bianca Ojuku wasn't having it. And um, reports said that she, like you've seen there, stood up and uh, uh, gave Ebele a piece of her mind. Let me put it that way. Um, Ebele you should, was you said should, to have, you should say the way it is. Ebele was said to have responded, I'm sure they know, uh, by uh, pulling uh, Bianca's head. Though uh, the people out there think uh, Bianca pulled the wig of uh, Ebele. <laughs> and you can see uh, DSS operatives, security operatives and co had to rush to the rescue of the two, to separate the two women. Uh, this was just before Charles Soldo um, uh, gave his inaugural speech. Um, the narratives being put out there, I have a problem with that. But Messi, what, what's your take on this before I tell you my issue? Well, uh, so first of all, it's embarrassing. Whatever the situation is, whether or not you know someone was a meddlesome interloper, a busybody, uh, but whatever the situation is, quite embarrassing. One would expect that you know in uh, a ceremony like this, very very a serious issue, because at, at some point you also could hear uh, the video of the governor. I mean. Swore, the governor of Sobs is um, swearing in at the time, talking about Charles Saludo, saying that, hey, if you're not part of this event, get out. 
Okay, when, um, when there was those, some noise, those, yeah, at, at because the, 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 the noise was, was after actually the, after the altercation, though. Yes, mm. but of course it was at the time, and mm. I mean it's okay that he was even focused and he could go ahead with the speech because it can be worrying that you're going to be taking an oath, you're going to be. It's a very important date, and one would not expect as much as you have security personnel around to ensure that uh, nothing happens outside of the ordinary, then you wouldn't expect that you have this little rancor and bickering around. So really, really embarrassing. But looking at the video you would see that um uh you know the wife of the former governor obiano walked because i saw it so the, from the point i saw it she was trolling taking the work you know to that point where you had um uh you know bianca ujuko uh, seated there so you can see that so for me i really don't know i can't hear the audio really really i've I tried to listen a couple of times but i can't really hear what happened like i can't hear the sound or the exchange but i can see the action there it just shows you that someone just left what happened you're supposed to be seated with your husband right so so that's what you're expecting it's a ceremony it's a swearing ceremony and uh you know you're a wife of a governor one ex would expect that you sit honorably with your husband what took you there and that's why i would say that's a you know like a busybody the word is medicine interloper took a stroll and you got to that point so some people will say whatever it is that you got you deserve it but like i would say generally it's it's totally embarrassing and at the point where we're saying breaking the bias women supporting women i don't know really not i cool. I, I, I didn't want to be the one to point out that <laughs> no but i need to i knew you i had so to before you come you come and put my neck on the <laughs> <laughs> okay, but but um, um, I, I'm worried. I think for, for that, what um, reason? Um, the 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 internet, um, the so-called credible news outlets, not the blogs this time, but the papers that we know, um, ought to be ashamed of themselves. Okay. Because yesterday, what happened was a disgrace for journalism in Nigeria. All the papers, most of the major newspapers who have online platforms put out the headline, uh, a Billy Chuku slaps Bianca. Most of them. And if you go to read the major ones that we, we even use for a a review here, if you go, you'd see that there are stories about this later they put update, colon, a Billy Chuku and Bianca Ujuku fight. But they rushed to put out, and, and this, this, this is just uh, evidenced or evidence of the fact that what we have in Nigeria today, by the papers that we grew up reading so that we could learn English. Right now, you have to make sure your kids don't read those papers so that English doesn't go bad. You know, now we have the new president of journalism in Nigeria becoming copy and paste. And this is wrong, copy and paste. A lot of the media houses are doing it especially the print media, copy and paste journalism. So why would the papers put up, rush put out a, you know, a story as breaking news? Without o only, only yes, only to now realize that it got it wrong and they have to update it. For what we can see, it is not clear what happened there. Exactly. For what we can see, we can't even hear what happened there. That's the first one. The second one is the way the, the pictures were depicting both. You can see there was one picture that has become popular of a Bailey looking uh, um, you know, she looks like she's shouting, her mouth is okay. almost twisted, mm. and she doesn't look well. And Bianca looking cool. And that picture, this is it, that picture shows a narrative that one person seems to be the troublemaker, while the other person is the person who is as cool as ice. So, in situations like this, the media has to not rush to paint narratives. Really, you have to just paint the story and tell the picture. And there's nothing wrong if you're not the one to break it first. There's nothing wrong if you're not the one to, to, be, to tell what happened, okay? Because we don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Did Bianca, Bianca slap first? We don't know. Did Ebele Chico slap first? We don't know. We can't see. There's no evidence to that fact. But on a light note, I think it was the Ebuka uh, of Big Brother fame who said that he's disappointed in the media that he watched the entire ceremony live on TV. And not one TV station could show him who did the slapping, you know. And then someone responded to his tweet, you know, that, uh, you know, the cameras in Big Brother House don't show us everything. Disappoint us sometimes. Of course, of course. And I mean, he laughed. He said, I can't, can't I joke with you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not the conversation. But we, we need to be careful, you know, first of all, the narratives we're painting, you know. Uh, there was an altercation, both parties, um, are involved and both parties are guilty at this point, you know. But 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 let, let me say this: uh, it's interesting that a um, uh, group of Igbo youth have declared them um, uh, a Bele Chuku 
or be an persona non grata in Ebola as on their own. Mm. And this is a conversation that needs to be had separately. Mm. Whether any group, no matter where you come from in the, in the country, no matter the culture you have, has a right to declare who should be in a part of this country. You know, of course, um, Bianca Odime Gojuku is revered in Igbo land. She has a title so, in Igbo. So, Igbo. I think it's alike, but something I need to check. As, as the wife and the successor, the survivor of um, uh, the, the, lead, the leader of the Igbo nation who led the struggle for a breakaway republic of Piafra, she's seen as um, uh, an untouchable, or let me say, someone to be revered. I think that's the word to use, someone to respect it, you know, and to try and drag her, pull her, or be in such a fight, uh, unfortunately, a bit of cannot win. Mm. No, 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 win. but, you know, some of the points, I mean, some of the points that you have raised very valid, uh, because as of yesterday, I, I still had to look at it. When I saw the videos making the rounds, I couldn't really, there was one video that was making the rounds that wasn't really clear. You couldn't even see what happened. So you can't the see. The one from but inside clearly, the yes, canopy. Yes, inside the canopy. Yeah. But like I could see, and like I would say, you just find someone who is taking a stroll to another point. So for me, I just feel like, why did you even go there in the first place? Whatever yeah. the case was. Yeah. And so whatever would have transpired, really. Yeah, but, but, uh, but, 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 but that's on the one side. But like yeah, I said, it's yeah. totally embarrassing. That's number one. Uh, the period, this is March. I mean, one would say it's uh, a month for women. This has been declared, breaking the bias. One would think women would put themselves together, whatever it is. So I, I didn't hear, and I still have not heard what happened. That audio has been played. I played a couple of times, but I can't even hear what was said. She used and an so uncharitable word um, um, to... So you heard? Yes, and yes, I heard it. I heard that word. You know, the video taken from inside the canopy, she used the A word. Mm. Um, that and is used to call uh, call, call no. commercial sex workers. Okay. Yes, okay. and then now um, people, a lot of people commenting uh, now. They've now labeled uh, ability that word in Igbo. Mm. You understand? Um, uh, it's it's and and the youth group that that put out the statement called on the IG to arrest the Billy, and uh, said that the the markets she went to buy, you know, she bought some items. That those items she bought from the market have to be delivered to her. <laughs> it's what they said. But it's but the but it's commissioner of police of Anambra State has said nada. We're not arresting No, 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 but, but but you need to understand. Like like I mentioned prior to this time, first of all, it's embarrassing, whatever the situation is. One would expect that, you know, um, the other party should be in control but usually this is your provocation and you also find out where even the bible would say parents don't provoke your kids or your children to anger and so you can't even control that but my point is i saw someone taking a walk i probably wasn't there i didn't hear what so happened so but why did you take a walk you left your seat you're supposed to be sitting with your husband probably put so, so put I, a hand if i if i, you know, walk, put a if hand you go to him. court and um it's proven that i walked to where you were and i said some on savory words no, to no, you. No, 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 you, you could have said. Can I land But you also have can the I issue of provocation. You know and, that, and if, you know if, that in and some circumstances. And I said someone, savory words, I know. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, 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 and it's proven that you were the one that physically harmed me. I may get, I may get some, some stick or some, some judgment, something, for provoking him, but the person who did the hitting will get the worst. No, but you that's know, it's fine. like football. That's fine. You that's know, Zidane. Fine. Zidane was was in the World Cup final. Coffee, coffee. That's totally France and, fine. France and Italy. That's totally and fine. And Materazzi, the Italian defender, went and told him some things. I think he also insulted Zidane's mother. Okay, so Zidane we need to move away. Him, but but, the, the but to be very honest, it's but totally saying, fine whoever gets things. the you know that's whoever balance. gets the punishment and whoever gets the verdict. One would say that hey, you should sit honorably with your husband. It's 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 an important event. I mean, I don't know why you should take a stroll to wherever you went to, whatever it is you wanted to see. You probably would have said it via text message or look for another occasion. But I mean, it's not a justification for whatever happened. But some people will say, hey, I think you deserve what happened to you. But we need to move away from that. Looking at another issue is the fact that leaders should be held accountable. And that came from Tony Elumelu. A very prominent Nigerian is also an entrepreneur, and I'd like to take a read. I just probably just read, uh, you know, his uh, comment. He got a lot of Nigerians talking, and got people saying, "Oh, all you need to do is just put a call." So it brings us to the conversation of saying, "You see this Nigerian that everybody says." I remember being on the street a couple of times. Uh, trying to get this box pop and do my job and some people will say oh it's not my business he said this nigeria you know consign me it's not my business he consigned everybody he consigns the president he confines the governor he confines everybody because you know the way it's going is affecting everyone mm -hmm. and we can't wake up and say that so quickly let's see if we can run through this one now he says um th this is from you know tony Elumelu's tweet and he says this morning, I'm listening to my colleagues at the office bemoan the very pressing issues that they face every day in this country. And for five days, and how things have been getting worse and worse. 
no electricity for five days, hikes in the price of diesel, uh, fighting, I beg your pardon, fighting food inflation, etc. How can a country so rich in natural resources have 90% of its citizens living in hardship and poverty? I have often said that access to electricity is critical for development, alleviation of poverty and hardship. And speaking of security, our people are afraid businesses are suffering. How can we be losing over 95% of our oil production to thieves? Look at the Bonnie terminal that should be receiving over 200,000 barrels of crude oil daily. Instead, it received less than 3,000 barrels, leading the operators at Shell to declare uh, the fact that they are divesting. Why are we paying taxes if our security agencies cannot stop this? It is clear that the reason Niger is unable to meet its OPEC production quota is not because of low investment, uh, but because of uh, theft, pure and simple. Meanwhile, all producing countries are smiling as the foreign reserves is rising. What is Nigeria's problem? We need to hold our leaders more accountable. Elections are coming. Security and resources need to be everyone's agenda. Uh, he also said that uh, coming, let's be vocal of our nation's priority. Evil prevails when good people are silent. We need to be vocal about 2023. Let's focus on Nigeria. Demand and advocate for leaders that deliver in 2023. Nigeria must be on a strong trajectory for progress and development. And that's, uh, you know, this tweet. You can imagine, I mean, this is the very first time for me. I don't know about you reading uh, such a tweet about Tony Lumelu. And I couldn't agree less with everything that he has said, you know, in this particular tweet. So, yes. It's affecting everyone. We cannot continue the same way. You can't even wake up and say, it's none of my business. I know a lot of Nigerians who say, oh, it's not my business. It, as long as it doesn't affect, it does affect you. When government makes a policy, whether policies of government, whether government decides to construct a road, it will affect you. Whether government decides not to construct a road, it would affect you. So we can't throw our, uh, you know, throw our hands and say, oh, it's not my business. It is your business. And it's time that we change the story and begin to hold our leaders accountable. We begin to understand the leaders. And we can't stay back and say we can't be part of the system. Because for every time you do not vote, you do not have any right to complain about the situation. So 2023, I'm hoping that Nigerians would take the country. The truth is nobody will fix this country for us, Kofi. Nigerians will have to fix Nigeria. And that's the truth. It starts with the election. You have to get your PVC. It goes beyond tweeting and ranting on social media. You have to be deliberate. Look for a candidate, credible one. You can't sell your votes. You sell your vote for 5,000 naira. I mean, sometimes I ask myself, how far can 5,000 naira go? So someone gives you a sachet of salt or a bag of rice, five cups and 10 cups. You will need fresh tomatoes. You will need ingredients. Come ask me. You can't cook it like that and eat it. You will need other ingredients. And how long can it take you? It is not. So from where they're taking that from, there's so much. We need to you know, ensure that we bring people that are credible. That's number one. We can't sell our votes. We must hold them because it's affecting everybody. Security is everyone's business. You never can tell when the robbers will come to your house, when bandits will be waiting for you. So we, we, we need to move away from not being very patriotic and get to the election. Oh, they are going to rig it. Nobody's going to rig it if you come out of vote. And that's what we're seeing here. It's, it's a, very, a very serious one. And, I, you know, like I would say again, over and over, I would say I support him on this particular tweet and everything that he said is very important. Up until now, we haven't had the government saying, oh, does anyone, heads are not rolling. We're hoping that, you know, someone is responsible for importing bad petrol into Nigeria. How come we don't have some people being arrested? It's a good thing that those who, you remember the story of uh, the souvenir petrol. So, so well, why don't we have just as much as you have given a bill, two million naira? Someone should be paying for it. We can't continue to do the same thing in this country and expect a different result. It's, it's, it's not rocket science, really. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, so, so interestingly, the comments on, um, on social media regarding this, um, uh, someone said, you know, you know, businesses are hemorrhaging because he started off his rant with uh, um, looking at the economy. It's mostly an economic thing, you know, uh, the theme or the thesis of what his uh, Twitter rant was about economy. And someone says businesses are hemorrhaging. So for, um, it means they're bleeding. For, for someone like, like, like um, uh, Illumelu to, to complain about the 
state of the economy, it means that the businesses are bleeding. And you know, the the in the Nigeria of today, the Nigerian economy of today, uh, the rich are also crying. And so Soke is not no longer the exclusive preserve of the young and free. It now also is the refrain of the high and mighty. They also have to so it's okay. So if you're not, you're not speaking out about what is going on in the country, what are you doing? Um, as some people felt, oh, you know, Lumelu is taking a risk, uh, tweeting like this, because, oh, they'll come after you, Oga. Uh, Oga go delete this tweet after two hours. You know, people were betting amongst <laughs> themselves. He's going to delete the tweet. But I checked just now, the tweet is still there. And I believe that, you know, People like Tony Illumini don't tweet on impulse like the rest of us. Exactly. People like Tony Illumini don't tweet randomly. They don't make random statements. Whatever they put out is calculated, is thought out, and is strategic. You know, so for, uh, for those predicting that he'll delete his tweet or like he's afraid that government will go after him and all that, listen, he knows what he's doing. He must have thought about it. And he's been, moreover, he's been tweeting about, you know, having the right leadership in Nigeria before now. It's not the first time. You know, he does it, it, sometimes it's not as open as this, but he's been doing this. Um, but some people have pointed out the fact that um, maybe the reason why um, Tony Lumilu is so okay is uh, because um, of a, he might have been affected, you know, by uh, some, some, some bad processes, let's call it that. It wasn't treated fairly. We know that um, there's been some bidding for some, some oil wells and blocks and all that have been... Um, uh, let go by the international oil companies that we've had in the country before. And some people are speculating that um, he may have been hit hard or have been given you know, a bad hand, maybe not treated fairly, and that's why he's uh, had to put up this. Um, some have also said, you know what, that um, we still have banks in the country, including a bank that he founded, um, extorting Nigerians and fleecing Nigerians with uh, debit alerts that they can't reconcile, which has led the uh, National Assembly to say they want to look into what the banks are doing. So they're saying, someone's saying he should fix that. You know, let the banks stop extorting Nigerians. Then um, <laughs> we can start talking. So these are some of the things people are saying. But we'll look at what, what comes out of this. Uh, it's interesting. I agree with what Tolly Nibble said. No matter what uh, the, the motives may be, the fact is what he said is the truth. And uh, they say, speak the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So, so let's so, move on to another one now. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm just hoping that we get to a point where we don't begin to make everything about when me, people make comments and people make statements, then we don't begin to you know, try to investigate the intention and begin to come up with conspiracy theory. What he said is reality. It doesn't really matter what has happened. But we're saying that we need to speak up. Because when good people keep quiet or silent about issues, evil will continue to thrive. And that's why we're here right now. So we're hoping that we're vocal. It doesn't really matter. You know the statement that says that, you know, you're dead and you're dead already. He says down is not afraid to go down. And so that said, but moving away from that, there's also uh, a top trending conversation where you have core members protest police shooting in Ibadan. And you, you want to talk about the issue of police protest. Uh, it said that it's yet to be identified member of national youth core members serving in your state, was allegedly shot by a policeman on stop and search uh, routine at a new garage in a local government of the state yesterday. And this is actually, like I would say, so I really don't remember if it was when you and I were on air, but I have, you know, for the very first time, I witnessed it in Lekki here, uh, a police actually shot. Mm. I was scared to my bones. Short, short way. He shot him. He, he just shot randomly. Okay. You know, and, and someone was, in the air or on the ground. Okay, so this is what happened. I was moving out of a, a, a particular space, you know, in Lekki, and then you had this traffic usually at that particular spot. So there were vehicles. So what happened was um, people were trying to maneuver and get away from the traffic. I really don't know. So you saw um, the, the, the police officers, you saw them, the interior uniform, very kitted. And then they were chasing after this guy. I really don't know what happened. So the guy escaped, and then they were exchanging words. And the next thing, the guy shot. The guy shot directly. I mean, he shot a live, um, um, you know, ammunition. That's what's called. He shot live. You know, he sh when I say he shot live, he shot live. And everyone was really scared about it. So the issue of police brutality is still on. I really don't know where we got to the point. Because if you look at the police slogan, it says, please is your friend. But is please really your friend? The point is, no one is saying that the police should stop, uh, you know, you have a right to go about your duty. 
But the question over time is how do you carry out the duty? It's not civil, it's not human. It's, it's, it's like you're treating animals. There should be a way. You can't just be rascal because you see a lot of rascality and, you know, uncertain, uncivil behavior uh, with, uh, you know, some police officers. And it, it, it really, that's what actually led to the police protest. I mean, the hashtag answers. But we haven't changed from where we are. I, I think that the police, the Nigerian police force should pay attention to that slogan, police is your friend, really. We need to understand if police is your friend. One well, no one saying you shouldn't discharge your duty, but how do you go about your duty? Hmm. All right, we we have to move on. Um, interesting, uh, you know, stories. But we ended on the sad note, really. We'd uh, bring you more as the developments unfold. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. When we return, we dive into the pages of the National Dailies. We have G.D. Johnson of the Nigerian Institute of Journalism uh, joining us for After Press. We'll be right back.